And thanks you for joining us on PM Express. Tonight, a big conversation about a subject that we've talked about a lot. It's not gone away. But something that happened very recently has brought it back to the front banner of national discussion. It's about ex gratia. We need to ask the question tonight, is it time to scrap it? We'll get to that question very shortly. Why are we asking this? Because you know him. This is Toby Afede. He's done something that many haven't done before him. He's the only person I know on record, at least publicly, who took ex gratia and says, I'm returning it. I don't want it. Why? Because he served as a council of state member between 2017 and 2020. When he finished, they gave him 365,000 Ghana CDs as ex gratia. Ex gratia means thank you very much for your service. They give him that and then he goes away. But he says, I, I simply in good conscience cannot accept this money. Why? Because I was paid a monthly salary whilst I was serving as, the, as, as a council of state member. I'm pretty sure his SNIT dues were also paid, his SNIT contributions were also paid. And so, so what's the point of an S gratia payment to me to say thank you? Because you paid me. If you wanted to thank me for anything taxpayers, it's reflected in the salaries you give me. So why are you giving me additional thank you because I'm, I've served you for four years and I'm going away? Those were the key questions that he had asked. Or you ask yourself when you read his statement that he issued to clarifying this. But he said something else that was in, important to me that I want to highlight. He also made the point that paying him 365000 for a part-time job, which is what the Council of State work is, and that's how he described it, a part-time job. He just says, in good conscience, I can't accept it. So on the back of this, it sparked a conversation. And this has happened at the right time because the economy is in, is in dire straits. So he's thrown a, a bit of a challenge that we'll need to get in. So if he can return it, then really those who benefit, Article 71 of his holders, here are they, they can do without it. The question is, so why do we still continue giving them? So that's, uh, if you look at Article 71 of his holders, the scratch your back, I scratch your back that you've heard a lot, it, it plays out in the constitutional provision. The salary is determined by the president. The president determines the salaries of all these, including, including the you know, speaker and deputy, members of the parliament, um, the district assemblies. He determines all their salaries. The executive, the executive does that, the chief justice, etc. Um, and then you come to, and, and this, by the way, also includes the, the salaries that um, you know, the, the council of state, etc. also gets. Salaries determined by the parliament. Parliament will determine the president, the vice president, the chairman and other members of the Council of State. And that's important because that's a conversation um, we are having partly because it was, was started by a former Council of State member and ministers of state and deputies. So let's track what the latest salaries are of the members on Article 71 office holders. The president is taking home 47,277 CDs a month of salary. And I believe that is not affected by tax. So this is what the president takes home. Vice president is on 39,000, right? The council of state member, as in um, Toby Afede when he was there, was, was taking 36,000, right? That's the last review. So 36,266. The thing about this is when your ex gratia, and I'll get some clarity on this, I believe it's calculated you know, based on your salary. So if you are 47,000, that means you're going to take home a big, big package to say thank you when you go. He got 36,000, you know, it comp computed for him when he was leaving, coming down to 366,000. And if you look at the ex gratia over the period, so when the president said four years, the president in his first term, he's entitled to 659,000 ex gratia. And there was an announcement recently that the president says he's also returning this. He's also returned this to the public, um, to the public chair. So the president has also done this before, after he had served the first time, because he's entitled to it. Um, the vice president obviously also is entitled to half a million CDs because of the S. Gratia. The speaker, um, the former speaker who left, will have taken home 488,000 CDs. The members of parliament who served in that 
first term of the MPP administration, the last uh, four years, between um, 2017 and 2020, should take home 390,768 CDs as ex gratia um, for their work, thanking them for it. But Togwe Afede says, why are you giving me 366? I've done my work, you paid me salary, that's enough. So he's returned it. I know he's been accused of, you know, being propagandist with this and, and trying to score political points with it. We'll come to that shortly. But I want to have a conversation about ex gratia as a concept, whether it's time to take a second look at it, whether we need it or we should, we should keep it, scrap it. Now, I want us to look at the Council of State salary over the years, and we tracked this. In 2017, a Council of State member for a part-time job was taking 19,734. This will be something that the public sector workers who were here yesterday talking about their salaries will look at it and say, oh, really? That's but that, the constitution, as I've explained, provide a mechanism for determining the salary. And we know the committees that have been set up go into looking at scientific ways to determine how much they earn. And they've determined that in 2018, they were deserving of 21,000 salary and then 2019, 23,000 salary, 2020, 26,000 salary. So that's what they are still on right now. This should be reviewed pretty soon, 26,000. You can expect that that will go up. Now, if you look at the remuneration, Council of State, one person in 2017, just, just um, salaries for the year, that would be 236,000. This is important because of Toby Afeda's point. Toby Afeda says, the whole of 2017, you paid me 236,000. He's talking about taxpayers, paid him that. 2018, you gave him 260,000. For the whole four years I was there, I took a salary combined total of 1.1 million CDs, right? That's what per person, that's what he took. He says, this is enough for my service. I don't need anything more. If you put all together, all the council of state members, for the four years they were there, is 12,000, 12 million, 12.1 million. Some say, but that is, that is really small compared to the time they were in office, right? But that's, in an economy like Ghana, many have said it's a big amount of money. Compare, if you multiply it with all Article 71 offices, this is gonna be big. So if you put all this together, the total salaries between the four years, as I've said, is 12.1 million. The total ex gratia that was paid to all the um, council of state members came down to 4 million. And if you do the total ex gratia plus salary that all the council of state members took for the entire four years, all came down to 16 million CDs. That is what the, the burden on, on, our, on our coffers, on the taxes that we pay. This is the total amount that they've taken there. So now that you understand the picture and you understand Togwe Afeda's concern with earning ex gratia, is it something that we can afford, or is it time to scrap it? Um, that's a conversation we've had before, but on the back of it, let's take an advantage of it again. Let's, let's see if my guests will agree it should be scrapped or maintained. I have guests who know what this is about, and they are joining me right now. Um, Inusa Fusini, former member of parliament, um, obviously himself may have experienced this directly, may have received this as gracia, I don't know. You see him on the screens that will ask him and whether he believes it should be, it should be uh, kept or, or, or scrapped. Also joining us tonight is the former Chief of Staff, um, could you opinion? You see uh, Prof, uh, Professor Juman ba Bafo also joining us. Uh, he's a man who was a CDD, is with the uh, Kufua Foundation, he's done governance. I, I'm pretty sure in his time as CDD, he's had cost to engage the subject. Yes, and so I'll, I'll ask him his thoughts. I mean, several years on since the 992 Constitution was promulgated, um, we celebrated, you know, the constitutional promulgation recently. Is it time to review this? And I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from uh, Kojo Pini, the former chief of staff under President Kufo, um, who will join us very shortly as well. Uh, he was there. He superintended over the payment. Uh, I wonder what his thoughts are on this all-important subject. Stay with me after the break. I'll get my, my guest perspective on this.
Thank you, everyone, for staying with us on PM Express. My guest, uh, Professor Bafo Ajumendria, former senior UN governance advisor and co-founder of the CDD. Uh, thank you, Prof, for your time on PM Express. Also joining me is Inu Fuseni, former minister of land and natural resources, former member of parliament for Tamale Central. Mr. Fuseni, I want your quick um, comment on the decision by Tobia Fede to return his S. Crusher. I mean, people have criticized him, some have praised him. What do you say? Well, it's neither here nor there. I mean, the, he's entitled to the payment by the Constitution. The, uh, Article 71 says that such persons appointed there and there are entitled to, to some retirement benefits. Mm. If he decides, elects, that he doesn't want the payment and returns it to chest, so be it. I mean, there are ministers of state who are working without being paid. They've decided that they shouldn't be paid. And so he's legally entitled to it, but he thinks that he doesn't want it. And, I mean, he thinks that he was engaged in part-time activities and that he was probably making more money from his full-time job than he's getting from part-time activities and that, and so he should not suffer the country with further depletion of resources and returning it. Thank you. Have you received yours? Yeah, I have. Okay. Is it accurate what we said, uh, 390,000? No, 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 no. I, I mean, last, my last payment from Parliament was around 100 and... But that was, that was, should be part payment. That could, can't be everything. That's everything. 100,000 cities? 100, 100 and something, about 100 and... For the four years? For the four years, yes. Okay. What's your, what's your view on it, though? Well, the... This provision, Article 71, finds expression in Article 58 of the 1979 Constitution. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So, it has some historical antecedents. It has some constitutional foundation. Uh, Articles, uh, the, the Third Republic did not leave its full term. And so members of parliament did not enjoy uh, payment, retire, uh, retirement, retirement benefits, so, so described in the Constitution. Retirement benefits are acts of uh, payment for contract, end of contract employment. And so, I mean, normally in Britain, it's 20% of your contract sum, which is paid to you as your retiring uh, benefits. Uh, but the, uh, in Ghana here, because of the way our constitution has been crafted, our retirement benefits always go high. You see, because somehow uh, we've tied Article 71 office holders together with the provision in the constitution which says that the facilities, salary, privileges available to the president shall not be diminished to his disadvantage, mm -hmm. reduced to his dis disadvantage. Yeah. And so, and then the president is enjoined by the constitution to set up a committee to determine the salary of Article 71 office holders, a salary which includes benefits and all those things. Now, and because of the reading of the two provisions together, the payment, salary of a president or an Article 71 office holder is always going to go high because you cannot diminish it to his disadvantage. So if this year the president received X, Next year, he will receive X plus. Mm -hmm. I mean, next time, he will receive X plus. In the, if another president comes, he's not going to come down. This is a, it's called the president. The worst you can do is to maintain it. The worst you can do is to maintain it. Yeah. And they don't maintain. Yeah. And, and, and the practice, again, which has somehow led us to not maintaining it, and that's a good, good observation, is that <laughs> presidents always set up the committee in their second term or at the, at the end of their first term. And so their pay salaries on account, on account of what their predecessors were receiving, until that committee makes a determination. And when that committee makes a determination, invariably, inflation and other things would have kicked in. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the, when the committee determines, that salary the committee always determines is higher than what they used to take on account. And so their ex gratia will also go high. Okay, and how is the ex gratia calculated? Well, for Parliament, I know, and, and for the presidency, I know that it's about two months, every month, every year a month. Mm -hmm. Every year a month. Uh, when we were in Parliament, we had said that it should be two months or so, every year two months, set aside. Now that can, I mean, the statisticians can work out the percentage. I, think I know that mm. we have said that, well, the basic salary, you set, up, you set aside one month for every year, mm. so that, that 
is paid to the contract worker and all members of parliament, all persons appointed uh, by the president, political appointees, uh, the president himself, his vice, are contract employ employees. I mean, they serve a four-year term. Mm -hmm. And that term, when they end, they must have paid some gratuity. And that gratuity is the retirement benefits and calculated on their salary. I mean, I'm curious. Talk about Fede published what he earned over 300,000 CDs. Yes. But that's significantly less than what you took. How is that possible? Because his salary, his salary is it means that they rank. It means that they rank him more than... No, but it's not based on salary because his salary is 26,000. The MP's yes, salary yes. It's, it's slightly higher than that. No, 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 no. no. Your salary 26, is lower? Lower. I, when you when were there, you were taking less than 26,000. 6, yes. Less than 26,000? 6, yes. Okay. I mean, we'll come to the other key issues shortly, but let prof quickly bring Professor Balfour Edgman. You are prof. So we have, we have a, a beneficiary of the ex Gracia who says, um, for two key reasons. One, you paid me when I was there, taxpayers, you did pay me. One, it was a second, it was a part time job. In good conscience, I can't accept it. So he's returned it to government chest. What's your quick comment on, on that action? I think uh, this is a very interesting development concerning a, one of the key institutions in our governance structure. And uh, I take his statement seriously because I think uh, Togbe reveals that, in fact, institution as high as the Council of State should not be a paying position for members. You see, the Council of State is not for referrals. If you look at membership, even as prescribed by the Constitution, members should be people of means, people who have served their nation to a very high level, who have accomplished in whatever that they have tried to do. So normally you are coming to that council not as somebody, excuse my language, from the street or somebody who owns nothing, somebody who has never built. So I take the word volunteer very seriously. But apparently, it's not a volunteer's job. It's a job, paid job. So in other words, we have created, or the Constitution has created jobs for people who don't need jobs. Because most of them are presumably uh, retired from their positions, right? I'm sure those who are elected by the regions or certain uh, mandated uh, institutions may, 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 may not uh, be retired, but generally, that's the expectation. So it is such an honorable position to be, it should not be attached to a salary as if you are waking up every morning, five o'clock, preparing yourself to go to work. It's not. Technically, they're supposed to meet maybe four times a year, but of course, it can be a hundred times a year, depending on the needs you know, of the president. That's one thing. The other thing is, what is the real mandate of the council? In essence, to provide advice to the president. And as the constitution requires, certain nominees of the president should go to the council for ratification, so to speak. Okay, these are the two key functions. Take the advice. A president of this republic can invite you, Evans, anybody out of the 33 million people we have for advice. So having a body constituted with a whole bureaucracy and secretariat maintained over years just to provide you advice, I'm kind of curious about that. Second, the, 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 the president, besides the Council of State, also appoints special advisors that he thinks are necessary for him. So you may have a senior advisor, advisor on economic affairs, whatever advisor, advisory position that he wants to create, he does. So when you look at it, then the role of these councils, in, the, in a way, is nebulous. It's, it's, it's a redundant, so to speak. So if you look at it, that now is a job. It's not just simply <laughs> a voluntary work, then it's worse. So my position is, why do you create jobs for people who technically may not need jobs? That's then, my point. If you put that in that context you said, then what do you then say about ex gratia then for, for the Council of State? As we've now known that it, it, almost 300, more than 300,000 CDs was given to them as thank you after they've taken the salaries that you've questioned. Certainly, my, my response should be obvious. 
if I'm saying that, look, these members do not deserve salaries, of course they can be given allowance for certain, uh, certain incidentals relating to their performance, but not to create salaries attached to that position to the extent that at the end of the four years, then you walk away with S. Gracia. For what? So that's why, well, I don't know why people are reading, well, you are free to read into the action of the Tobe. But for me, I'm not interested in the motivation for his action in the statement that he wrote. I'm more interested in the facts that he has revealed to the public. Until this statement came out, I didn't know that in fact they are attached to salaries. You see? Yeah, I mean, they, they, uh, because they are, uh, they are Article 71. Article 71 of yeah. holders. So, so by, by that, obviously, constitutionally, they are on salary. They are, they are on salaries, and they've been on it for, for a while. For since the promulgation of the Constitution. Quick thought on this point, though, that the council is as constituted, considering that it's not something that you go every day, and that's Togbo's point. And I'll come to the bigger conversation about S. Gratia generally applied to as, you know, Article 71 office holders, politicians, etc. But for the Council of State, it's quite different from the other Article 71 office holders. In your case, you go there almost every day. In the executive's case, the president does the same. Other Article 71 office holders, the general, they all do. That is very unique, actually, when the Council of State is an outlier in that. You can correct me if I'm, if, if I'm wrong, and that's the point he's suggesting. Should, is it right then to put them on that same scale, regular allowance, as Gracia, as they currently enjoy? Well, <laughs> let me say that the framers of the Constitution uh, thought that the Council of States is an important institutional state and that they will be offering important service to the state. And that means so conferring the benefit on the state for the generality and welfare of the people of this country they must be put on salary. This is how the framers of the Constitution thought. And that was why they were put on salary. And never mind, and, and, and that is the principle. The principle that having created a body and having assessed the contribution of, the, of that body to the, to the deliverables, I mean, de delivering uh, 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 services to the people of this country, that body must be remunerated in ways that will challenge them to work more and, and so, we must be paid. Well, if, if Tugwe says and the uh, prof says that, well, because they meet four times, I know as a matter of fact, they, they have other responsibilities. I mean, they can take uh, 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 tours of the, of the various regions uh, to see how they can douse uh, fires, uh, region fires, uh, try to resolve conflicts. Uh, when e levy was not being passed, they try to intervene. They try to intervene, and there are many other things that they do. Uh, the fact is that, yes, giving grant, having granted them that opportunity to work for the country, they must be paid. I mean, if you confer a benefit on the country, you must be paid for it. Now, Togo Afedi has decided that, well, at the time that he was serving this country as a member of the Council of State, he did not think that he should be paid. Uh, yeah, that's Gracia, because that's he's taking his salary. He's taking his salary. Yeah, so he received the salary. He received the salary. Ex Gracia is directly related to your salary. Yeah. Okay, if you are not on salary, you are not a contract worker, you don't receive ex Gracia. But in, 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 is it conscious? In fact, and the Constitution describes the retirement benefit as salary. Okay, so. so there's, it's not a legal, um, there's no legal contest over the fact that the Constitution says they're entitled. Yes. Okay. But we're now been talking about reviewing the Constitution. Where yes. do you stand on the question about this Council of State, the way we remunerate the members, the fact that they can also take ex gratia, considering the work that they do? You, you, you support that that should something that we should maintain as a country, as a poor country? Well, if you think that we want to assign them the responsibility of doing part-time job. We don't want a full-time job. We are not going to give them vehicles. Their privileges include vehicles. They are given yes, yes. vehicles. Yeah, yeah, they give, they give them the V8. They yes, yes, yes. But, 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 they, have, they have facilities. They yeah. have, they've been given... From Bafo's point is that, shouldn't we rethink that? Well, well, well let me develop it. They have been given facilities. They have a big office. You saw it? Yes, yes, yes. A big office. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, it, they, have been, they have been enabled 
to perform their, their duties. If we want to com confine them to providing advice only to the president, and that uh, they should be entitled to payment of allowances, the, the Constitution, I mean, when the Constitution is being reviewed for amendment, that suggestion could be considered. But what's your position personally? Well, my position is that there's nothing wrong with it as it is now. Okay, let, let's get into the conversation about S. Gratia generally. I mean, Professor Bafour, uh, Ajmandua, the concept of S. Gratia itself, I wonder where your position is on this. On the back of Togbia Feder's action, it's brought back the conversation to the front better. Everybody else in Article 71, the, the MPs take it, the, as I illustrated, the president does it too, takes it too, the vice president, speaker, should we still maintain this concept as of ex gratia across the board for Article 71 office as we currently have it? You see, Evans, uh, first of all, I, I wish we have access to the background notes of the constitutional makers to really have an understanding and perhaps an appreciation for the motivation for creating that clause in the constitution. Because certainly, we have a situation where uh, we have selected uh, the political and administrative elite to be given special treatment at the end of their service to the nation, okay? A small group of people. Uh, then I'm not sure whether this kind of system exists in any democracy. I've tried to search a bit to see how other democracies treat their political and a bureaucratic elite, but I can't lay my hands on it, anything. But what surprises me most is that this constitution was supervised by a government that claimed to be a people's government, you know, not an elitist, for the people. And here we have a clear uh, class distinction, selecting a few to be given special privileges. That's another interesting philosophical thing we can all debate yeah. later. But having said that, my main beef with the, uh, with the Council of State, before I come to the S. Gratia generally, mm -hmm. is that the creation is redundant. Okay. You see, I will tell you something. Before the Kufo administration, when Professor uh, Kwapon, the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, was made the chairman of the Council of State, before then, the Council of State was existing mainly to give advice to the president. And I'm in a position to know. It was Squapon who organized it and started getting them to write papers, to do this, to do that, because otherwise they have nothing much to do. So if they're now creating jobs for themselves, that like uh, my good friend of was saying, if there's a crisis in uh, this place, they will go and sort it out and all. These are additional things they've created. Otherwise, they have nothing to do to justify the amounts that we spend on them and their bureaucracy. So, you, so, so are, you, are, are, you, are you suggesting we should scrap it? Of course, I think it's redundant. I've made a point earlier, Evans, that if it's a matter of advice, the president can call you anybody of the 33 million people to get advice that he wants. The president can appoint presidential advice because in spite of the presence of the council of state, that any president can still appoint special advisors that he, he chooses to have. And it's been going on over the past 30 years. So what then it is? That's why the council is struggling to create jobs for itself. The council can say we can do conflict mediation, sure. But then we have created peace council. You see, I think there's a tendency to put, to create layers, duplications in the governance structure that without regard to the expenditure that we have to expend on these uh, layers mm. because yes and that's, that's another thing we have to be worried about okay. because if we are a country even though we, we we believe we have a lot of resources yet we have not been able to manage our resources in such a way that all of us can live comfortably and at the moment we are all struggling to make uh, our uh, the ends meet why do we then spend money you see that's why i take the two base uh, action in that kind of context, because certainly he is a person of means. So are the, most of the other members of the council. That's why I regard the council basically as an honorific position. And if you are taking an honorific position, it's not for the money. Where is our sense of patriotism? 
Why is our sense of voluntarism? This country, everything has been monetized to the extent that even people that are highly regarded, people who have accomplished life, they have accomplished a lot, who have made money legitimately in their own lives. Because if you look at me, those classified to be in the council, they are not ordinary people. Mm -hmm. And yet they go there and you put, to, put them on salary. See, the problem we are discussing is not a, the creation of any government or any president. It's the creation of the constitution. Mm -hmm. That's why, in my humble view, if we are going to review the constitution, certainly the Council of State is one institution that we have to be, uh, give a critical look and perhaps to scrap it because in this absence, nothing will change in terms of how presidents get the advices and how they rule the country. So because you... finally, do you know, mm -hmm. can you tell me any one nominee of any of the presidents we are having in this republic that the Council of State rejected? I don't know. If you know, tell me. No. So it's going to be a routine thing, robust, robust stamping, because it's not parliament. Then what, what is it? <laughs> that's, it beats me, yeah. Evans. That's so, why I'm really so, so you've answered a uh, categorical yes to my first questions about do you scrap the council? I'll come to you and ask you, so do you scrap S. Gratia too? But let me get a quick reaction to that. Redundant. Scrap it. Well, I think that uh, the argument of Prof has been arguments that has been argued over a very long time. But we haven't done anything about it. We haven't done anything Maybe about it. Maybe it's time to do so. We just <laughs> celebrated mean, that. It, even argued in our secondary schools. I remember yeah. in our government classes in yeah. secondary schools. Hey, what you are saying you're reducing me to your secondary school level. <laughs> Why do that? No, 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 no. <laughs> prof, prof, I'm saying that, I mean, the... the, the it's a long-standing It's a long-standing issue. I mean, I know. And, and Prof, you know that this provision... You've done it. Back in CDD, we raised the issue. Back issue. Yeah. Uh, yes. That's and, 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 so, yeah, you're right. And, and this, this issue in Article 71, actually, is Article 58 in the 1979 Constitution. Mm. Word for word. Lifted. Uh, lifted. And so, uh, it has been around for a very long time. Just like the Ombudsman and the Shirai has been around for a long time. Uh, the fact is that, and I agree with him, I agree with Prof, we like real pretty layers. Somehow we're toying with the idea of a two-chamber uh, legislature. Yeah. And then so uh, if we couldn't get a two-chamber, we create one create other. Else, yeah. We create something else. And, yeah. and so we created the Council of State. With laudable ideas, get, get people, seasoned people, uh, people who have accomplished and achieved in life uh, to, to, to look in the eye of the, of the president and tell him that probably this is wrong mm -hmm. or this is right. But it's not, it does not turn out to be so. I mean, you, and it's true, the Council of State, even when uh, the, a, a minister was uh, uh, nominated by the president, uh, I mean, he, uh, no, no, nobody disqualified him. Yeah. It was parliament that disqualified him because of the past, Council of State passed such a person to come before vetting. Yeah. And so for, for, it, it's true probably that the Council of State has not lived up to expectations. So do you scrap it? Uh, well, it's time to scrap it. Yeah, I think that we need to do something about it. I mean, I, I think that we need to. Yes, and I agree entirely with Prof. Do I mean, something about it. What, what, what is that? Well, do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that something? What, what, what's that something we should do? We should do. Because you see, you see, even if you look at the composition of the Council of State, I mean, it can't work. It can't do anything to a president. No, it can't. What, what, what can it's it? It's the council. Like, you can what can it? You can take council or not. First of all, the president has got nominees on the council of state. And heavily treated. The council of state members are heavily treated towards supporting the president. Yeah. And so what can they do to the, what can they do to the president? So, he, so he's right. He's, and to, he's, he's, he's right. Yeah. I mean, and that's why probably they're not, they're not, that was not the type of council of state that was anticipated. Yeah. When you were talking about the second chamber. Okay. And so... Yes, I mean, probably I'll, I'm beginning, do, 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 do to, I'm beginning agree, to be persuaded by... By Prof's point. <laughs> by Prof's point. Do you agree? In, in that context, they are an unnecessary burden on the state then, on the state purse, in a country of scarcity. Absolutely, price. absolutely. I mean, absolutely they are unnecessary. They are unnecessary because we don't see their value. Unnecessary because sometimes they do what we all think they, they, they will do. Yeah. And, and so they don't add anything new. Okay? And... And probably that is why Togo Afedi has returned. Because probably he just thought that for the four years, you see, that, thing happened. that thing happened. Yeah. And so, so why, why would I take extra Russia for working, I mean, when, when our work was not meaningful to the state? And so, yes, do we need 
a council of state. I don't think so. Let, let's, let's, let's move on to the next big question, uh, Prof. Prof, so you are affirmative in, in, to the question, what, you scrapping um, Council of State. ex Gracia, by the way. Should we scrap it? That is uh, a little bit... Um, we need to think through, you see, because my understanding is uh, if you take ex Gracia and his definition. Certainly, he's uh, doing somebody a favor. It's not a, yeah. it's somebody Th does something good. Th so thank, say, you for, thank, thank you for your service. Okay, uh, yeah, handshake, exactly. Yeah. Which is something you find in corporate bodies, corporate entities, yeah. especially at Western countries, you know. A CEO can retire with $10 million, uh, especially if he made a company profitable and all. And it's based on pro profits that you've made, how much you've contributed to the creation of wealth of that particular entity. In our case, we don't have a, a <clears throat> okay, let me put it this way. <laughs> I'm not sure, and uh, my good friend uh, Hussein may help me here. Parliament, when they are there, do they contribute to SNET like all workers do? Do they? I'm not sure. Yes, yeah, they do. You do contribute to SNET. Yes. So, so that is building up your pension, right? Yes, yes. So in that respect, S. Gracia is really not a pension scheme, or is it? No. Oh, good. You answered me then. If it's not a pension scheme, then it's just a, a, a free gift. It's just a gift to go away. Meanwhile, you have done your job diligently and you've been compensated by the state, just like any public officer has been compensated. A teacher, a doctor, uh, uh, you name them, nurses, all of them, they've been paid. And the scheme of things, we know that generally in this country, the pay rates are very, very low. Mm -hmm. okay? But those at the top seems to be especially favored. And when the finance minister comes to tell us that about 75, perhaps 78% of our national revenue goes to service emoluments yes. in the country, then you have to think of it. What percentage out of that services the top 10, 15% of the public or, or the, you know, the public class? What percentage? It may come up that a huge percentage services the top echelon of the public sector. Meaning that maybe the uh, 75 or so percent below the disparity between that and the top may be so huge. Mm. And that is a serious class distinction. Yeah. You see, when people are agitating for better salaries, and you put it in the context, then you wonder why at the end of the year or every four years, somebody who already has a lack in salary will be getting 20 or 25% increase, when those at the bottom are getting five or so percent increase. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think we need to find a way to rationalize how we compensate. My final point on this one, just a few days ago, the government statistician came with a formula to tell us that in fact, uh, even those who are paid 2005 average civil service uh, salary, uh, if you look at their performance, maybe it's about half. In other words, they should be paid half of what they got in because apparently, uh, according to him, uh, output is almost non-existent. So we put the same question to those in this uh, category, Article 71, what is the output? I'm not talking about parliamentarian because there we know they talk, they do things, at times even they fight. So I'm not <laughs> going to talk about how they perform. <laughs> but, yes, you see, we don't have even a system of evaluating performance. So if you look at the other state agencies, especially the state-owned enterprises, where we now have another state agency to supervise them with the CEO and the whole uh, bureaucracy. And yet every year they are declaring losses, not profits. And yet they are maintained and paid and given these uh, uh, gracias and all. Then you see, you wonder how really we are managing our resources. Yeah. I mean, so, so, the so, so yeah. So the question comes to the, comes to the fore, which is from everything you've said, 
Do you have a clear idea what we should do with it? Should we review it? Should we scrap it? I think it should be seriously reviewed. And if, in fact, that's why I asked my good friend uh, earlier whether it's pension, and he said it's not. Then in that case, why do you create a special privilege for these few people? If, in fact, it's not a pension scheme because they contribute to SNAP and everybody is contributing to SNAP, why do you then give them this uh, free uh, uh, giveaway? I mean, wh wh why? It's, it should be reviewed and perhaps scrapped. It should be. A lot of people are not happy with this, by the way. And I'm sure my good friend knows that. Across the country, as Russia is one of the irritating things. And I, I'm hoping that maybe towards the elections, uh, some groups who should make a demand that any, the parties should promise to review it with the constitution and everything else, otherwise they won't get their votes. We have to begin to agitate strongly for a serious approach to reviewing the constitution to do away with some of these, uh, uh, what I call, waste that we have created for ourselves. Do you agree? You see, review ex gratia. You see, review we must, not ex gratia. We should review oh. the modality for, for determining the salaries of 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 uh, article seventy one office holder. But we are talking about. I have asked. No, no, no. Let, 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 you we'll must. You must no, you. As, uh, first, uh, okay. Let me come back to ex gratia. Yes. Now come to the. Salary. First of all, there is no ex gratia. There's nothing like ex gratia. What? Ex gratia is a lexicon, taken from the ordinary people, and put on the payment to members of parliament. I disagree. Professor Ya in Tiamwa Boedu Emolument Committee report talks about ex gratia. Ex gratia, there's no ex gratia in the constitution. In fact, that determines part of your salary. No, there's no ex gratia in, in the, the constitution. constitution. Okay. But the committees are being set up. There's, there's no, the, the constitution Over doesn't time, say you, I've, I've the constitution I've, I've, says I've, I should pay you retirement benefits. Retirement? Retirement. Uh, but, 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 but you, didn't, you haven't retired, have you? No, because you are a contract worker. You are working for four years. And at the end of the four years, you are gone. So your retirement benefits will be calculated on the basis of your salary. But that, that's why SNAT is there. No, that is an annuity. That's an annuity. You contribute. I mean, SNAT, is, SNAT operates on uh, intergenerational equity. That look, we present generation who are capable of working, we work to, to get those who are retired to live well. And so that one will also get old, you're not going for the money that you contributed and put down. You're, you're, the, future, the, the working class, the working generation will also contribute and get you fine retirement. That's, that's pension. Mm -hmm. You contribute and, and you are paid. It's based on the principle of intergenerational equity that our succeeding generations will take care of preceding, I mean, or, or receding generations. Now, that is different. If you don't con contribute, you don't benefit. If you don't help look after the old, no young person is going to help look after you. That's pension. Gratuity, and that's in the case of Apasara, when he went to court, I remember you interviewed me, and I, I had opportunity to clear it for, for, for you on, on air, that look, you can't go to court and say that you are entitled to pension from parliament, because you must contribute. Mm -hmm to be able to get pension. This is not the case. The principle is quite different. And, and with the greatest respect, it's all over the world. In fact, in Britain, it's called gratuity. If the court, even in the Pasada, called it gratuity. So, so that you, when so, you are a contract so worker- So you prefer to call it gratuity than- It's a gratuity. Yeah, but it's the, same, the effect is the same. What is it? What is it? We, it comes back to Togbe's point. We pay you salaries whilst you're there. Gratuity means that you are working and you have been paid salary. And when your contract ends, they pay you a percentage of your salary as gratuity. For a politician, why should we though? What is the justification for A politician a is a public servant. But a public servant in... And a public don't, servant... Don't if, if a public they servant... They go with their pensions. Well, the judges are public servants. Yeah, I'm, again, the elite, he says. That, 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 you're talking yes, about I, the elite. So, uh, okay, so I say that, well... There's some kind of conspiracy there. Well, what's the difference between yourselves no, 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 no. I, I and the thousands that, I of people? I agree Republicans. that there's some kind of conspiracy, and that is what is evoking the anger of the people, that you can't, you can't bring together a class of people and treat them differently. Yeah. So, so why isn't that we should, that's why we should so stop when, that? The, when His Excellency John Draman Muhammad was in power, I remember this matter came up very seriously, prominently, and he thought 
that that committee should be a standing committee and should not be at the instance of a certain president. Mm. And if you... Presidential Emoluments Commission. Committee, commission. Set up that way. And so it determines. And any time that's a new parliament, you don't need to change the members unless you replace some who are dead or who cannot perform. Then they take decisions. That, that they, they don't have the benefits of, I mean, history behind them and experience. So fundamentally, you will keep as Russia the it's way it is. Kept, first of all. You will keep it. It's kept because, not ex Russia. Retirement benefits, that's what the constitution says. You keep you keep the S Gracia by changing the name to retirement benefits. It's retirement benefits as a, for a contract worker everywhere in the United Kingdom is paid to politicians. 20% of your salary. But I need to ask you, you that question though. Is it fair to pay politicians and the elite class, as Prof calls it, while the thousands of other because she said but they are public servants? Don't get that. You only go with your pensions. Why don't you just go home with your pension that you get when you actually retire? Well, that is a different uh, 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 argument we can engage in. We but it's a relevant no. argument, isn't no, it? No, no, it's relevant. Because you're all public servants. It's it's, but the risks are different. What's the risk in your case? There's no risk. You sit in parliament. Where you, you get loans to buy fantastic cars. You, you have immunities well, you mean, in the constitution. You mean, you mean, you mean, well, there's no risk. Where's the risk? Well, the risk is huge. Where's, what's the risk? Or you need to go to parliament and see the risk. But you, you tell me. You need to go to the presidency. The, this and constitution is crafted to protect the MP. You have immunity. You have privileges. You have... That, there can't be a risk Well, there. you don't know that the MP helps in the stability of the country? Yeah, but you're passing laws. <laughs> you're just... You're fundamentally... You're you reaching out to people. You're being... Yeah, but you, but it's service. Local. It's service. Just as a service. Yes. So you, that's, that's the service demands that... But the, be treated. but the thousands of other workers and ministries, they're also rendering service. But they yes, don't get but, but gratuity. Not all workers and administrators are paid the same amount of money. Not so. But, but your pay is so quite what I'm saying high. That even, at, if, even at Joy FM, not all news uncles are, are but, paid. At, but in the, the minimum, in the minimum, all the public servants get the salary. And then they enjoy from their snake. You should all do the same. What I'm saying is that... Take out the ass, What, I, what I'm saying is that they, they ought to have a good reason why in, 1970, 1970, in 1979, that position found expression in the constitution. And it was lifted again in 1992. And, and, and it, not all provisions in the 1979 constitution made it to the 1992 constitution. But this particular provision made it to the 1992 constitution. There ought to be good reasons why it made it there. In, 2000, in 2022, this year, do we still need it? We still need it. Okay. We still need it. In spite we of all... Because, no, no. We need it because you are evaluating the contribution of members of parliament, Article 71, to the stability of this country, to the development of the country, and you are appreciating the role. And so when, after four years, they are exiting, you need to pay them off. So you are gone. You are done. You can come back to us again. You are done. If you win your elections, fine. You come and start again. So every four years, somebody who wins an election and returns will get S. Gratia. He signs a new contract with government, with the state. Every four years, you sign a new contract. Mm. I mean, Prof, final, final uh, thoughts on this matter. So you say review. Of course, he, um, in his of saying, he disagrees with it. And we, we've, we've had this conversation over and over again. Nothing seems to happen. We had an opportunity yeah. with the Constitutional Review Commission to look into this and others. We recently celebrated, what was it, 30 years of the, of the Constitution, um, 1992 Constitution recently yeah, yeah, this year. Yeah. Um, the opportunity has come again to, to look at some of these key issues. It doesn't appear that there's any movement on the constitutional review at all, especially when it comes to, you actually have mentioned that review the whole salary structure for Article 71. Of yes. It. Have a commission standing in place that will do this on a regular basis without getting somebody to appoint. Should we adopt a holistic approach to this problem when it comes to Article 71 office holders? And, and how do we do it? Sure, it should be holistic, no doubt. Uh, I think uh, we have, and I think uh, Fusina has made some strong points, of course. Uh, there are a few points he made I am not in agreement. But uh, overall, I think if we are going to review the Constitution, this issue, which seems to be agitating the public, should be one of those. You know, you know what? The downside of this discussion we are having. 
We have created a system to make it look like in this country, politics is the only avenue to fame, to wealth, to everything. Mm. So young people from universities are all gunning into politics. That's why the, uh, uh, the elections of nukes on our campuses have become a major issue. It's a do or die. Corruption effect. and all. You see, because we have created a strong impression with the reward systems and other things for our politicians to, to make it look like is the only avenue to make it in this country. Yeah. And that's dangerous. Yeah, our efforts should be directed to developing the private sector as an alternative to getting into life and doing well, rather yeah. than politics. Otherwise, the corruption that all of us are concerned about will multiply. Yeah. Because everything here is monetized. Yeah, anyway, prof. that's just my point on that. Prof, thank you very much. Well, I, I think that on this point, I'll agree. You agree. Entirely I, I was, with Prof. I was going to say... I was entirely going to say, with Prof. Because, uh, you see, we've, I, made, I just, we've, I just made, have we've made ten politics, seconds, so. politics the most lucrative job yeah. for any up-and-coming young man. I was just going to say that I, I want to come for my share of your ass, Russia. It's finished. How? I mean, because you you were already, already always living on borrowed money. So you have to settle your debt. Pay your debt. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the rest of your evening. No.